Hello, CLAT aspirants. So, developing a habit of reading is very, very important. And to develop this habit, we have started with a very important scenario that is short stories. Yes, short stories. You know, we all have heard stories from our grandmas and from the people who have, you know, lulled us to sleep. They act as a lullaby. Yes, a lullaby. As Virginia Woolf rightly said, what are short stories? Toys I twist, bubbles I blow, one ring pass through another yes and I wonder there are stories at all so these are the stories which act as the base or a foundation for reading which story I must hear starting with today a wonderful story that is the model milliner you know the meaning of the word model is an ideal a person who is worth following an inspiration to follow and a milliner a rich person right this is a story by Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde is an Irish writer he has been the Nobel Prize winner and the writer which is really, you know, a gem of a person who is really worth reading. Let's start with what does the story say? This is the book that we have here for Oscar Wilde, that is the model Melina. Oscar Wilde is a very known, renowned Victorian Irish short story writer, novelist, essayist, playwright. You must have heard of various books by him. To begin with today's story, this is the first section of it. The first line itself starts with an epigram. What is the epigram? The epigram says, unless one is wealthy, there is no use in being a charming fellow, right? This is a famous epigram of English. If you're handsome, if you're beautiful, but you have no work, no profession, lawyers, please note, right? If you're handsome, charming, good looking, fascinating, attractive, alluring, enticing and enchanting, it's of no use. What is important? Important is that you have a profession, you have a career, you have a goal to pursue, you have the professional job that's very important romance is the privilege of the rich and not the profession of the employed and prosaic should be the poor should be practical and prosaic the word to be noted prosaic means mundane and ordinary people that is the cliche or we would say that is banal or boring their life is a mediocre life they don't have the you know the humdrum the boring run of the mill kind of a life right and we have the hero here the main protagonist Huggy Aruskin right he was very handsome person very good looking he was wonderfully good looking see the details that have been given the story is loaded with vocabulary students which will act as a backbone for you it is wonderfully loaded with wonderful words he has crisp brown hair he has clear cut profile that is the face his grey eyes see the writer has described him such a way a man who would be very much famous among the men but not only among the men he is also famous among the women his father didn't leave him much legacy he doesn't have much money he has just a peninsular war 15 volumes he has some books which he has just uh, hung over his uh, walls he doesn't have any money and it is just a hundred a year that an old aunt announced him that means he's just getting just on the verge of beggary now it is not that he's not hard working and diligent he's handsome he's hard working he's diligent he's tried various professions but as a professional thing he was not successful he has fallen flat the first profession he tried was the stock exchange you can see for six months he tried this profession and he was proved to be a failure see the wonderful idiomatic usage what a butterfly to do among the bulls and bears butterfly is very fragile and weak right iridescent and bulls and bears are very strong people the stock exchange people how can a butterfly survive among the bulls and bears then he tried selling dry sherry. See the second profession he did, but the sherry did not answer. It turned out to be too dry. And ultimately he became nothing, a delightful, ineffectual young man with a perfect profile, a perfect face and no profession right so he had tried to be in the stock exchange second tea market third selling sherry but no profession now he is in problem why because he's handsome good looking he's very famous but he doesn't have a job right and to make matters worse when you don't have a job you have no right to fall in love students and he was in love and love also with a lady called Laura Merton she was the daughter of a colonel the colonel was very strict he said dearies you can uh, roam about you can wander <coughs> 
but no marriage no engagement why because you don't have money he was he was so much in love with laura that he was ready to kiss her shoe strings you can see this idiomatic usage they were the handsomest couple of london but no engagement what did the uh, colonel say i hope you've got through the first part what did the colonel say the colonel say that come to me my boy when you have 10000 pounds of your own now this is a kind of a condition which the colonel has kept and huggy looked very glum very sad gloomy depressed with a long face becoming blue and had to go to laura for consolation one morning he was on his way to holland park and he found his best friend one of his friends alan trevor see alan trevor is a painter we have been introduced to huggy eriskin his uh, beloved laura merton the colonel merton's father laura's father and alan alan trevor alan trevor is not handsome he is not good looking but when he was is taking up his brush he was a real master maybe he is not good looking but he has a profession who is better see what the writer is saying unless one is wealthy there is no use in being a charming fellow that means if you are handsome but you don't have a profession you are useless but if you have a profession and you may not be good looking you have great value on this earth right so a painter he was and he was a wonderful one he was an artistic pleasure to look on and an intellectual repose see the wonderful usage oscar wilde has done he loved huggy he wanted to be surrounded with handsome people and huggy was really a handsome fellow a dandy so he told him and he gave him a permanent entry to his studio now further huggy came at that time when huggy came there so at that time he was giving the finishing touches to a life size picture of a beggar he was painting a beggar the beggar looked very piteous very wretched in a very bad conditions torn clothes and as you see beggars right and this is a beggar of uk so here we have a battered hat and he is asking for arms now huggy was really touched you know he was he felt so much pity for the beggar see the beggar he doesn't have money although huggy himself did not have money to be noted but <coughs> he was just a grade up to the beggar he looked at the beggar and he asked trevor how much do you give to this beggar he said oh for this i give just a shilling or two shillings hardly and what do you get see he asked him what do you get i get 2 uh, 3 pound 2 2000 pounds you know painters poets are given in guineas gold coins huggy was deeply touched this beggar who is work standing for hours and hours and this painter is getting the tremendous sum nonsense at this time because huggy felt that the major paints were his he was making the picture and so naturally the profit will go to him now he says fine huggy i am very busy right now you smoke a cigarette and keep quiet we'll talk about it now huggy is deeply touched by the condition of the beggar and at that time he just had a kind of a frame maker he said just sit quietly i'm just coming back when trevor was absent at that time huggy looked and searched his pockets he felt his pockets he found a sovereign and some coins some copper coins he this sovereign see you have you are a millionaire you have lot of money and you give money to a beggar is not something great but you just hardly have one sovereign for this sovereign you will have to sacrifice handsomes you know what are handsomes handsomes are the carriage for a fortnight so no carriage for 14 days 2 weeks imagine still he gave him this sovereign this was the biggest sacrifice he made you know if nobody is watching this almighty and your good work doesn't go unheeded yes he gave him this beg the beggar looked at him first he smiled and he said thank you sir how he walked away now alan finished his picture he met uh, alan in the evening in the club and alan asked him you know that beggar was very much interested in you what did you do to that beggar and he was asking about you and laura 
this is, was very shocking. It was shocking for Hagi because how could Hagi tell his private affairs to somebody like a beggar? He told him, see I have some coats and some old clothes. Do you want to give that to the beggar? You know, Hagi did not answer but then Alan Trevor said, yes, he look wonderful. See the sarcasm he is making. He look wonderful in that coat. But then, you know, who is he? He said, no, he looked very pitiable, he looked very sad, he looked very forlorn. You know, he is actually, yes, he is actually Baron Horsberg, one of the multi-millionaires, a person who could buy whole of Europe and London, who dines in gold plates, he can prevent Russia from going to war, he can, you know, buy all London tomorrow. See the description. And this description was enough to make Hagi realize Hagi felt so bad. He said, I gave this beggar a sovereign, I am so such a big fool. But see, actually Hagi did not make a mistake. Hagi gave a sovereign to the beggar out of philanthropic spirit, out of generosity. And he did not do it that he is going to get back something in return. It was not a businessman's formula. He said, I'm very sad, but I gave him a sovereign. You can see he was a picture of dismay. He was very sad about it. And then Alan asked him, you gave him a sovereign, my dear boy. What did you do? He said, I can't even show my face in the row. I'm going back home. And what to do? I'm very, very sad. But actually, Huggy went home. And when he backed home, went back home, the next morning, he had a servant who brought in a card of somebody, a gold-rimmed spectacle person with an aura and dignity came to him. I'm from Baron Horsburg. Yes, he said, I'm from Baron Horsburg. And this Monsieur Gomaron Horsburg has given an envelope for you, right? The suspense. What is there in this envelope? He says, this is the envelope he has sent. And he, when he opened this envelope, what was written in this envelope? It was written that I have come from Baron Horsburg. The Baron has offered you my sincerous apologies, has commissioned me to bring you this letter. And he extended a sealed envelope. In, on the outside was written a wedding present to Huggy skin from an old beggar inside was a check of 10,000 pounds. You know we have so many rich people on this earth. Do these rich people, these relentless, heartless people care about somebody's dream? This Baron Horsburg, whosoever he was, the rich person at least fulfilled the dreams of Hagi, made him marry the girl he loved, the girl, dream girl of his life, that is Laura Merton. It was all because of Baron Horsburg. When they were married, Alan Trevor was the best man. He was accompanying the bridegroom and the Baron made a speech at the wedding breakfast. The last line which contains the kernel of the story, the gris, that is milliner's models remarked Alan are rare enough, but by Jove. Jove means God Jupiter. Milli model millionaires are rare still. That means people who are very rich, who also have a heart and who are ready to help the needy people, the people can fulfill their dreams. Such people are rare on this earth. And who was that? That was Baron Horsburg. Because of Baron Horsburg's hap. See, Hagi gave him a sovereign not thinking that he is going to get anything in return. It was just a gesture of kindness. And the same milk of uh, kindness was flowing in the heart of Baron. And he learned from uh, Alan about Hagi and he gave a sovereign to him. In return, 10,000 pounds. So if you do good, you get back good. The moral of the story. And the story teaches not only the moral, vocabulary, idioms and many more things. So the beginners, reading for the beginners, the ones who are just starting with, please begin with this short story. Yes, an ideal millionaire. Yes, the model millionaire. Thank you.